sand. Lots and lots of sand. Be it through glass, concrete, or even TNT, I'm completely out of this stuff. And frankly, at this point, I'm done with goddamn shoveling. So to avoid shoveling ever again, we're going to build a sand quarry, which is basically a giant flying machine that's going to move through the desert and strip all the sand out of it for us. Unfortunately, we can't just plonk this bad boy in here and let it run. Setting it up is going to be a seven step process. Now you may wonder why I didn't just build a sand duper. And that's because I'm a pretentious asshole and don't believe in sand duping. Uh, besides, my server mates probably wouldn't approve if I built the sand duper. Just tell them you did it by accident. Works every time. Dude, what the fuck? The first step to building our quarry is going to be to find our location. We're looking for a nice long desert with minimal water, so A, I don't have to drain water, because that's it's a pain in the ass. And also because our quarry is limited in width, so to get the best returns, we want a very long path. And after a couple minutes of searching, I think we're coming up with a good location uh, kind of down in this general area here. So I'm out here at the site where we're going to launch the sand quarry from, and it is time for the second step of our preparation, which is to clear out a space to actually build the quarry. So I've built these uh, down XL TNT dupers by Glow Squid, uh, and they accelerate the TNT downwards when they fly. So what they should do is create a fairly smooth floor. And we're going to take all of this, all of these mountains and shit, uh, down to Y54. And we are at 77 right now. I think I picked the single worst spot to do this. The amount of water was frankly horrifying. I used like 18 shulker boxes worth of gravel filling it in. It was nightmarish. Let's grab schematic. What? What the fuck? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> no! It's lined up over here, right? So, <laughs> I made this. There's no way. I just did not <laughs> make this hole big enough. You fucked hard. I'll, I'll just correct my mistakes real quick. Now the hole can actually fit the quarry. And as you can see, we have kind of the main work area and then the return stations here. And we need to make a trench for our return stations as well as our collection. So we're going to bomb from you know, this area, and we're going to take that all the way up, 2,000 blocks that way, to the other end of the where we're going to run the quarry. Alright, as you can see, we now have all of our trenches done which means the side of our quarry is all good to clear. As you can see, I have this big light manica area selection box, and we need to remove any land that goes above this so our quarry can clear vertically as well as horizontally. So any blocks above Y80 need to be removed. So I've got to help out. I've got my old, trusty old buddy, the Euler uh, 3D TNT duper here. Real classic would recommend I've used many a time and it's a solid machine so yeah we're gonna we're gonna get blowing up to some mountains all right so now we're moving on to our fifth step which is the collection system and I've gone ahead and set up this very long, painful water stream off camera because as I said, it was, it was long and painful. So here is our quarry. The sand items will get pushed off right here and then they'll fall down into the water stream. And since this is a 2000 block long quarry, uh, we are limited by render distance. We can't load this entire thing at once, obviously. So periodically, uh, we're going to have a little side stream off into a nether portal 
and then move things, and then load the nether side and move things through that way. All right, here is our nether side. Uh, we got the big ice road and with the little item pushers. So the items will come out of here, get pushed and aligned, and then these slime blocks will come down and scoot them along. So I guess the first thing to do is going to be to link up all these portals because I don't want to have to tear the whole machine down later. And you know, portals are a little bit uh, bitchy, to put it mildly. So we got our nether side done here, which means all of our items come down here, get merged, and pushed into this portal, and that leads us to the overworld side here. Yes, I am. I am recording this after the quarry has started. Uh, what happens after it comes through the portal here, as I've blocked for testing purposes, ignore that, uh, it goes through this six times hopper speed box loader, which uh, loads up the sand, and that drops it down into these two bulk sizes here, which hold, I believe, either 1 or 1.2 million items per slice. So, uh, we should have one, like 1.5 one million sand by the time all this is all said and done. So for our sixth step, we need to remove all the immovable objects, that being objects that can't be pushed by pistons, uh, out of the way, because these will break the quarry if it contacts them. So we need to go through and clear them out. I took a light matic of the whole area, world edited them out in the creative world, and then just brought that schematic back over and used verifier to find the blocks. All right, now it's time for our seventh and final step, which is to you know build the actual quarry. Probably would be helpful. Unfortunately, though, um, as usual with my projects, the materialist is a, a bit of a bitch. We never speak of this again. Yeah, as you can see though, we are out here, we got the schematic all pulled up to build our quarry. Down here, we got all of our resources piled up. So now the only thing left to do is for me to stop yapping and get building. So before we actually launch this thing, I just want to take a moment to explain how the whole deal works. Uh, so this sand quarry is designed by Desu Desu, uh, so if you're interested you can find it in the link below. The way this thing is actually able to harvest sand though is by taking advantage of its behavior as a gravity block. As we can see here, this floor thing is being pushed forward by the flying machines, and as it does that, the sand is pushed upwards and then falls down onto the soul sand which breaks it in item form as we can see. Now if the block it's encountering isn't sand, it's only to just pull it up and push it and it'll stay up and float because, you know, the other blocks aren't gravity blocks as we can see here. And with the extra pistons here, it actually moves all the solid blocks up and above the flying machines so they can clear through. In addition to letting the sand quarry go through the land that way, it also creates this massive goddamn liminal space underneath where it's been. Now whenever the little flying machines reach the end here, they drop their sand into the water stream and get turned around and head back again. And after that return streak, the flying machines will push all the sand items to the other side where they get collected. Well ladies and gentlemen, we are done. The sand quarry is completed and it is looking beautiful but also awful because these damn arrows I did place it, so uh, they are they are useful. They tell us that the quarry is going this way, in case you don't have otherwise functional eyes. But I've run a schematic verifier, and we should be good to go here. So, I need to flip that fence gate and pray. As Brad once said, dick, balls, titties, go.
That is a good start, good start. All of our flying machines have made it out of the dock here. Great, the first hurdle has been cleared. And our next hurdle will be on the other side here. Alright, moment of truth, people. Here she comes. Yep, we are home free. Now it's time to sit back, enjoy the time lapse, and watch me remove this entire desert while doing literally nothing. This is what we in the industry refer to as a fucky wucky. Our first overnight AFK session has resulted in a um, catastrophic failure. As you can see, quarry looks good here, um, and then about half of it is just gone. And at first I had no clue what happened, you know, why they just detached. Most of it didn't even make it in. But I looked at the replay footage, because I had replay mod going the whole time and a singular piece of sandstone that sandstone right there that singular piece of sandstone broke the entire thing the only real solution to this is unfortunately going to be to just tear down and rebuild back here and let it get through build i think i'll have to blow up some of this mountain range to make space and i can hopefully just tack the front on and resume and save some of the runtime. This is really not how I wanted this to go, you know, obviously, but uh, as Limp Biscuit once said, It's just one of those days! Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is finally complete. After over 80 hours of cumulative runtime, the sand quarry has reached the end. This is certainly one of the craziest things I've done. And as long as it did take, and as much as my computer will probably blow up because I thought it'd be a good idea to leave the replay going, the same replay for 47 hours of the 80 some, uh, as much as as long as this was, it did have a payoff. Get down here, we have this slice. Oh, that's full. Oh, that's full. Yeah, we have filled this entire slice, which holds 1.2 million sand. So, we're, we're up to 1.2 million. And over here, on this end, what do we got? Filled the bottom. Filled that, and almost filled this. So let me do some math. Uh, this totals out to 1.46 million sand. I, I, I think that will last us a little while. Now that we have nearly one and a half million sand though, we need a more effective way to process all that sand. And I'm going to start with uh, building a proper new super smelter because this thing is a piece of shit. I may have gone a little bit overboard. Yep, instead of scrounging through the archive discords and YouTube for a solid pre-made smelter like, you know, a normal person, uh, I decided to design my own basically from the ground up. Uh, there are a few things I didn't design, that just being like shulker loaders and unloaders, as well as this rail layout here. But yeah, let's get into the proper working explanation of this thing. So this is a 432 furnace smelter. My primary goal when setting it up was to get a shulker box smelted in under one minute. 
Uh, the actual smelting only takes 40 seconds, but by the time you factor in the distribution of the items and unloading of the box and such, it comes out to just under a minute. Alright, now let's get into a proper explanation about how this baby works. So to start with, let's note that there are two modes in using this thing, manual and automatic. Manual mode is going to bring the items directly from the furnaces when they're outputted straight to the player in item form, while automatic mode is going to load those items in the shulker boxes before it's returned to you in here. So let's go ahead and plonk some, some sand in here and see what happens. So after the shulker box is emptied, the minecarts are set free, and one minecart goes on each track there to distribute the items to our furnaces. I'm not sure who designed that rail layout originally. It was probably in Sector Talon because it involves minecarts. Uh, but what this does is it puts four items in each furnace and then returns the minecarts back to the start there. Our smelted items then make their way back to the box loader array. Since this smelter is so goddamn fast, it takes 3 6 times speed shulker box loaders to keep up with it. However, when using multiple loaders, you can have issues getting your items back. For example, you could end up with 3 partial boxes instead of 1 full box. To deal with this issue, I installed a trinary counter here, which directs the flow of items into one loader at a time. And then, it switches to the next loader when a box worth of items has been added. This means that by the time the system cycles back to that original loader, it's actually caught up on the backlog and is ready for more. So this allows us to keep the same high throughput that we need while also keeping all of our items together. Then after all the items from that shulker box have been smelted, it redispenses the minecarts and starts to cycle again. You know, if you want to look at this thing, maybe try to build it yourself, or just look at it and judge it and laugh at me, uh, you can download it from the schematic in my Discord. Uh, just a little note to, to certain people, maybe please don't steal it. Moment of truth. Box of sand. It made the noise. It's out. Getting sucked in. Alright, the minecarts are moving. It's good, good. Everything distributed successfully. We are smelting. Alright, great. Retraction. So our minecarts are being returned now. <laughs> As you can see, this thing absolutely rips. So our minecarts got redispensed. And we're receiving the last of our items here. Oh. Okay. Something screwed up, something screwed up. There you are, you little bastard. So now, we're just gonna toss uh, three boxes in. Make sure everything works. And when we're done, it should end up in here. First box. Alright. This is the last of that box. Okay, the cooldown has ended. In any second, yeah, we're receiving our first items for the next box. And that first trapdoor, it misses sometimes, so it has to recycle it back through. But now, as you can see, we're using the first loader here. So, next box, we should use that middle loader. Okay, first items coming in. And we're going into the second loader. Good shit, good shit. Alright, any second, should have it coming through. Third box. And there we go. Now we have all three boxes. I've which... run out of blocks. Okay, so, uh, well, what I... kind? What kind? Well, that's that's the thing. It's kind of up to you. I need... I think... Uh, most people have given me about five or six blocks so far. Uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for. But they've got to be unique. Yeah, the, the only condition is one of them has to be... Uh, like... One of them has to have stairs and slab variants and stuff. All, all I'm going to give you the hint so far. Uh, OP's... OP, OP's been really good. Um, Spy's been really bad, and Logan's been really interesting. What did Spy do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll find out, I suppose. Alright, alright, I, I think I got it. I think you got it. You got it? Alright. Yeah, these right, are what's little... your first item? Uh, Blackstone. Blackstone, okay. Okay, okay. Please take mine, I have too much of it. 
Yo, I, I'm, uh, that's, that's happy. That's, I'll, t I'm, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'm, I'll do try, that. I'm trying to get rid of it. Alright, then. Okay. Uh. Mud. Okay. Okay. Sandstone. Okay. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. A ancient debris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if this uh, is the one I think it's the only that one was a little bit cruel. What's, what's the next one? <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that's gonna be lovely to, to gather up. Hey, I did 2,500 of them for Godzilla. Yeah, well. Oh. Okay. And. And. Okay, okay. Well, is, that, is, that, is that just extra or is that actually. Yeah, that's a tip. That's your tip. Um, okay, well, yeah, so thank you for your blocks. This is gonna be the block palette for the part leading to your base from the Nether Hub. And nothing else. Fuck. This is pretty ugly just out in the open here. We know we have Godzilla, beautiful work of art. But, you know, this is ugly. So is that stuff. But, well, that's a job for another day. So we got a pretty this place up. That is much better. It is so nice to not have that ugly ass smelter just chilling there. And this, this looks, I'm very proud of the design. Really like how it turned out. It was fun to put together. I've never really done anything in its like factory industrial style before. So in the comments, if you have suggestions or thoughts on it, uh, feel free to put those in. There is a problem with it though. Uh, that being, <laughs> it is, I forgot to light it up. And it's awful. So I'm just going to kind of pray that I never need to do maintenance on the smelter. And therefore never have to interact with it. Well, now I think we can finally consider our sand problems well and truly solved. We not only have nearly one and a half million sand, but also a sick factory and smelter to process all that sand with. If you're interested in a dedicated guide video for that smelter, uh, please comment down below so that, you know I know if it's actually worth continuing development and polishing up that design more. Uh, if you want it in the meantime though, that's going to be available in my Discord, there's a schematics channel there, it has the necessary instructions to not fuck it up hopefully. Uh, also any of the designs I use in this video can be found on a master Google Doc in the description there, so everything should be there. And, and yeah, until next time, tell your focus sizes hi.